The scorecard structure and data values can be built up manually or loaded via imports in Spider Impact. I'll start with a manual build by leveraging the manual org structure I've already selected. The first step is to build a scorecard by selecting new scorecard. Providing a name, I'll call it scorecard, and select create. An important note is that only one scorecard is allowed per organization. This becomes a critical thing to understand when importing. With that said, I immediately get taken to the next part of the hierarchy, which is perspective. I'll type financial and click create. The default is to create another perspective, but if I want to build the next level down, which is objective, I'll select financial, select new scorecard item, and this time I'll type increased revenue as the name and select create. Once again, the default is to create another similar item, but if I want to build the next level down, which is measure, I'll select increase revenue, select new scorecard item, and this time type training revenue as the name. I'll switch the scoring type to goal red flag. There's several other fields I can set at the measure level, like calendar and data type. All of these fields will play a key role in the automated import that I'll review shortly. With that said, I'll select Create. To finish off this very simple structure, I'll select Done in the bottom left. Now, that only took a minute, but if I had a massive structure to develop, building it all manually might take a really long time. And this is where I would recommend stopping and exploring more efficient alternatives like importing. I can do that by selecting any part of the hierarchy, and then selecting the Send To button in the top right, and selecting Scorecard Import File. That will dump it into a CSV file that I'll open up in Excel. I'll expand the file a bit and increase the zoom. And also double click to expand all columns there. I notice there are a number of columns included in the file, a good percentage of which are only applicable at the measure level. Each item in the hierarchy resides on its own row. This is very important to understand as certain columns like description can only correspond to one item, such as a description for the increased revenue objective. I also notice that at the measure level, there are five columns that have been populated, even though I only took the time to load the scoring type. This is because certain items get automatically assigned unless one is specifically chosen. If I wanted to quickly add another measure to the increase revenue objective, I can copy and paste the last row. If I just want to change the name of the measure, I can maybe change it to book revenue. And I'll leave all the other columns as is. If I wanted to create a new perspective, I could copy and paste from that row down. I'll change the perspective to customer. I'll change the objective to improve customer satisfaction. And I'll change the first measure to customer satisfaction survey. Since this measure is a percent, I'll change the data type to percentage. To avoid summing percentages, I'll change the aggregation type to average. An important note is that the spelling is critical. If I have a typo, the settings will fail. Moving on, if I expect the goal in red flag to be the same for every period out into the future, I can scroll to the first threshold column And I'll put in a threshold value for the lowest value, which is going to be 90 for the red flag. I'll then enter 95 for the goal in the second threshold column. Note at the end that there is up to seven threshold columns, which is only applicable with one of the 11 scoring types, three color stabilize. To illustrate that, I'll change the name and scoring type to three color stabilize.
I'll then change the threshold values at the end to 1 to 7, just so that I have an entry in each of those columns. Assuming I'm done with the scorecard structure buildup, I'll click Save to save all of my changes. The question now is, how do I import that back into the system? I'll go back to Spider Impact, and this time I'm going to select the automated org. And I'll first note that a scorecard has yet to be defined. Since none has been defined, I have an option to import scorecard items. I'll click on that, and then I'll accept the default of upload a file, and select next. I'll select drag and drop new files here, select the scorecard CSV file we were just working with, and click open. At the scorecard item import dialog, I can adjust the column mappings. I can remove a mapping by clicking the right edge of a column and selecting X. To add a mapping, I would select a column like Perspective and drag and drop it to the appropriate location. Another option is the ability to ignore rows. For instance, I could click Ignore next to Training Revenue. This would then import all rows from the sample file except Training Revenue and I now see that that row is grayed out. I'll keep that change and I'll click Run Import. I'll confirm that the import was successful and select Done. I see that the structure has been created. I'll just touch on the new items that were created within Excel. Under Financial, I have a new measure named Book Revenue. I also have a second perspective named Customer. Beneath that, I have an objective with two measures. I'll select Customer Satisfaction Survey, and then select Edit. And I'm going to confirm that my changes to percentage and average have come across, along with the threshold values of 90 for red flag and 95 for the goal. I'll select the next measure, and see that the scoring type change to three colors stabilized was brought across, along with defaulting values of 1 to 7 for the thresholds. I'll select Done. Next, I'll show that a scorecard structure can be imported when one already exists. Spider Impact will add new items, but will not modify existing ones. With that said, this should still be used with caution. To demonstrate this, I'll import the training revenue measure that I just ignored. First, I'm going to go back into Excel and remove everything except the heading row and the training revenue row. At this point now, I'll go ahead and save the changes. I'll go back to Spider Impact and ensure that I select the parent of the item that I want to import. In this case, I need, I'll go ahead and minimize customer, and I'll select the increased revenue objective underneath financial. With that selected, I'm now ready to import the measure that I ignored. In the top right, I'll go ahead and select the import icon. I'll select scorecard items, accept the default of upload a file, and click next. I'll click drag and drop new files here, select the scorecard CSV file, and click Open. I'll confirm that just the training revenue row is being imported, and I'll go ahead and select Run Import. I'll confirm the one measure import was successful, and click Done. I'll then confirm the measure was imported to the right place by expanding financial and increased revenue, and I now see the measure. See that the trading revenue measure has been successfully added at the bottom. If I want to move it to the top, I would need to select Edit, select Training Revenue, and then drag and drop it to the desired location. And now I can click Done. Next, I'll move on to updating measure values. Measure values can be updated manually or via three different types of imports. I'll go ahead and click on Training Revenue and show the first option, which is to update it manually. I'll select Update, 
and for the month of September I'll enter a value of 225,000, a red flag of 200,000, and a goal of 220. I'll then click Save. As we saw with the scorecard structure, loading that manually was painless, but if, what if I had a full year of updates? That might be a great time to stop and explore more efficient alternatives like importing. In the top right, once again, I'll select the Send To icon. But instead of using scorecard import file like last time, I'll select Measure Value Import File. I'll confirm that I want to export the automated org structure and select Next. If I wanted to load a file for January through September, I would need to change the dates. I'll go ahead and type 1 1 to 9 1 Next, if I have both actual and threshold values to load, I need to switch to, from the default of dates in a header row to dates in a column. And then I'll select Next. On this last step, I can preview the file. I see that the September training revenue has already been loaded, along with the thresholds for the two measures at the bottom if I scroll all the way down there. If I'm okay with how this looks, I'll select Download Import File. To start, I'll increase the zoom and expand all columns. Notice that the measure import file contains much less columns than the structure file. Due to my wizard selections, I have one row for each measure for each of the nine months of the year. The name of the organization, measure, and its unique ID have also been included. I'll focus on the training revenue for this upload and for the sake of time, simply copy the September actual and th threshold values to January to August. Note that if the threshold values were always the same for every period, it would have been smarter for me to define them at the measure definition level. They would have come across automatically, as we see here for customer satisfaction survey and three colors stabilize. Assuming I'm done with the measure value buildup, I'll click Save. The question now is how do I import this file into the system? I'll go back into Spider Impact select the import icon once again, but this time select measure values. I see that I have two options, standard and simple. I'll select simple import and select next. I'll select drag and drop new files here, select the file I just updated and select open. I'll select run import, make sure it ran successfully and click done. And I now see in the chart for training revenue that values have been populated for January through September. I'll now move on to the second way to import measure values, which is the dates in a header row option that appeared as a default earlier. It is intended as the most efficient load of measures that only require actual value updates. To illustrate this, I'll select Customer Satisfaction Survey. This is a perfect candidate for the dates and header row option since it contains defaulting thresholds for each period. Once again, I'll select the Send To icon in the top right and select Measure Value Import File. I'll confirm the automated org and select Next. I'll change the dates once again to January to September. And this time, since I just have actual values to load, I'll accept the, the default of dates in a header row and select Next. At the last step, I'll select Download Import File. To start, I'll increase the zoom and expand all columns. Instead of having a row for each period for each measure, I now have just one row with the dates coming across in columns. It's a much easier file to work with. 
I'll now load the customer satisfaction survey, actuals year to date. For the sake of time, I'll make that 95 for each period. And I'll leave the other two measures blank and save the file. Once again, I'll go back into Spider Impact, select Import, and measure values. This time I'll select the more powerful standard import option, which turns the value import into a powerful nine-step wizard. I'll accept the default and select Next. I'll accept the default of Upload a File and select Next. I'll select drag and drop new files here, select the latest import file, and select Open. On the fourth step, I have the ability to change the header row or ignore, ignore rows for this import, but I'll just select Next. Under Transformations, I could transform the data in a number of ways, but I'll just select Next. In the sixth step, I'll confirm that I'm importing values for four measures, most notably Customer Satisfaction Survey, and select Next. Under de Destination Measures, I'll select Scorecard on the right and select Add. I see that four measures were added. If that was an error, I can click on Edit Four Measures and delete the desired measures. In this case, I'll just select Close and click Next. Under Mapping, I'll confirm that the four measures are being mapped correctly and select Next. The last step is extremely important. If I were to just select Run Import, the work that I just did would be a one-time process. However, if I select Save Import, I could give the import a name like Advanced, and I could adjust the task owner. I could schedule the import timing but I'll leave that as is and select Save and Run. I'll then click Done. I'll confirm Customer Satisfaction Survey now has the actual entries of 95 for January through September. If I select Training Revenue, I still have the 225,000 values from the dates and rows upload from earlier. If I had changed those values in this latest upload within Excel, they would have been updated accordingly. Next I'll show that there is a third way to import measure values via the home page. Before I do that, I'll select Book Revenue and determine its ID. To do that, I'll select the eye icon in the top right. and From here I can see the ID, which is 2286. I'll then select Close. I'll click Home in the top left, and then Update Measures. At the top, I'll then select the Import Measure Values icon. I'll select Simple Import, and select Next. I'll select Dates in a Column, download the example file, and open it. I'll increase the zoom and expand all columns. I'll then delete rows 3 through 6 and edit the second row to load an entry for, for book revenue. I'll change the ID to what I'd gathered from the info tab, which was 2286. I'll put in a value of 75,000, value date of 8122 and I'll enter 50,000 and 70,000 for the thresholds. If I wanted to enter another period, I could copy and paste that row. I'll change the value to 70,000 and the value date to 91. With that, I'll save 
and return to Spider Impact. I'll select drag and drop new files here, select the metric value example file, and click open. I'll then select run import. I'll confirm two rows were imported and select done. I'll then go to scorecards, select financial, select the objective, and select book revenue. I now see the actuals and thresholds for August and September coming across from the Excel file. I'm now going to leave the scorecards world by selecting initiatives and demonstrate the handling of initiatives. To import initiatives, I'll select import initiative items. I'll accept the default of upload a file, select next, and then download example. I'll open the file in Excel, increase the zoom, and expand all columns here. I see that I can import initiatives, tasks, and milestones along with a description, start date, due date, total budget, goal function, and tag. For task A, I'll put a start date of 1-1-22, a due date of 12-31-22, and a total budget of 5,000. I'll then click Save. I'll go back to Spider Impact. Select drag and drop new files here. Select the initiative import file. And select open. I can then adjust column mappings or ignore rows. But since I already have a perfectly formatted file, I'll just confirm the task A entries. Select run import. And click done. And just like that, I've successfully imported two initiatives, two tasks, and one milestone. If I select task A, for this item we'll see a start date, due date, and budget. Now, if I want to import more tasks to an existing initiative structure, I can. I'll go back to the initiative file in Excel. I'll delete the last two rows, and then the second row. I'll change task A to task C task B to D, and add task E. I would then adjust the other columns as appropriate, but for now I'll just click Save and close the file. I'll go back to Spider Impact, and my next step is to be sure to select the initiative the task will be imported to. In this case, I'll select Initiative A. I'll then select the import icon in the top right. I'll select Initiative Items, keep the default of Upload a File, and select Next. I'll select Drag and Drop New Files here, select the Initiative File, and click Open. I'll confirm that I'm importing three new tasks, C, D, and E. Select Run Import, and click Done. I now have a total of five tasks under Initiative A. With initiatives, tasks, and milestones now in the system, I can either edit them manually or via import. To illustrate updating a status manually, I'll choose task A. To update an item manually, I'll select add status update. I'll apply an update date of 930, set the percent complete to 75, and the money spent to date to 3000. I'll then select Add. That was fairly painless, but if I had a lot of items to update, I would once again recommend using an import. The first step is to determine the ID. I'll select Task B, select the I tab in the top right, and make note of the ID of 18019 and click Close. I then need to create an import file. I'll select Import and then Initiative Status. I'll select Simple Import and click Next. I'll download the example file 
open it in Excel, expand the zoom, and double click all columns there. I'll then delete the last three rows. Note that the file contains an ID, date, percent complete, spent, and notes columns. I'll change the ID to what we just gathered, 18019. I'll change the status date to 93022, percent complete to 50, and spent to 2500. I'll then click Save and close the file. Going back to Spider Impact, I'll then select drag and drop new files here. Select the initiative status file and click open. I'll then click run import and click done. I now see that a status update has been added for September 30th. Next, I'll demonstrate that data can also be imported from a database. I'll start by showing where import connections are defined in Spider Impact. I'll select Administration and then the Import Connections option. To define a connection to a database, in the top right I'll select Add Connection. At the top, I would need to select whether the database I'm connecting to is MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, or SAP HANA. I would then enter the correct parameters for that database. For MySQL, for instance, I would need to provide the database host, port, name, user, and password. Once those parameters are entered, I would select Next. And then I can name the connection and select the connection owner. For the sake of time, I'll just go ahead and click Cancel. And note that for previously defined connections, on the right, I can either edit or delete a connection. I'll note that I can also define connections for SFTP, Google Sheets, and Zapier. But for now, I'll just focus on the database example. Once a connection has been defined, I can then build up a measure value import by selecting the Imports option. Under Measure Values, I'll select New Import. I'll accept the default of Standard Import and then Next. I'll switch the data source to MySQL and click Next. I'll confirm the database connection and then enter the appropriate SQL to bring back data from my database. In this case, I'll type select star from so social sentiment. I would then click next. I'll then click next at the transform step. I'll drag measure ID to the first column, make sure everything is mapped and click Next. Under Importing, I'll select the MySQL org. On the right, I'll click Improve Brand Awareness and click Add. I'll ensure all four measures are added and click Next. The screen here, I'll select Next. I'll click Save Import, give it a name of Database Import, and select Save and Run. I'll confirm the import was successful and click Done. 